Hi, I'm Shen Lan from Duke Clinical Research Institute and Shanghai Renji Hospital. I would like to tell you our study about the use of beta blocker, statin, and diuretic increase the risk of new onset diabetes in patients with IgT. It's a reanalysis of data from Navigator trial. The study question is, what is the risk of new onset diabetes when using beta blocker, diuretic, and statin in patients with IgT and any other cardiovascular risk factors? The summary answer is among patients with IgT and cardiovascular risk factors. By using serious glucose measurement, the use of diuretic and statin are associated with increased risk of diabetes, whereas the effect of beta blocker is non-significant. Many recent studies have shown that long-term use of diuretic, beta blocker, and statin increase the fasting glucose level, and those concerns have led the US FDA to initiate a statin label change in 2012. However, limited study has examined the association among patients with IgT and cardiovascular risk factors. Therefore, we initiate our study by using data from Navigator trial. Navigator trial is a multinational randomized trial examining the efficacy and safety of nateclinide and versatan to prevent the diabetes and cardiovascular outcomes. A total of more than 9,500 patients enrolled into this trial from January 2002 and 2004. Patients enrolled uh, have IgT as baseline, and those patients who have diabetes are excluded. Therefore, we examine the initiation of treatment among patients who are treatment naive at baseline for the following four subgroups, beta blocker, diuretic, statin, and calcium channel blocker, which serves as a negative control. The medium follow-up is five years. Endpoint of our study are defined as new onset diabetes, specifically as following defined. The frequency of measurement is every six months for the first three years, then annually afterward. We examine the initiation of treatment on progression to diabetes along the whole follow-up time. We use marginal structure model, which enable us to take into account time-dependent variables. And those time-changing variables depend on which to initiate, stop, and subsequent changes of medications. Marginal structure model, simply put, is a Cox proportional model adjusting for time-changing variables. Among the study population, 16% of beta blocker and naive patients initiate beta blocker treatment during follow-up. 20% of diuretic naive patients initiate diuretic during follow-up, 22 for statin, and 18% for calcium channel blocker. From the baseline, we can see that patient who initiate treatment has the same fasting glucose level and the HbA1c level compared with those patients who never initiate any treatment during follow-up. The result of our study showed that the use of diuretic and statin increased the risk of diabetes with a hazard ratio of 1.23 for diuretic and hazard ratio of 1.32 for statin, whereas the effect of beta blocker is non-significant. We have robust data for our study and there are some limitations. First, it's a post hoc study from a navigator trial which is not powered to examine such association at the first place. Second, we did not examine the dose response for those medications on progression to diabetes. Third, we have limited population in beta blocker group, which is underpowered to examine such association among those populations. And finally, we did not examine the cardiovascular outcomes by using those medications among IgT patients. The strength of our study is that first, it's the largest study of this kind to date. And we use a standard method to diagnose diabetes by using serious glucose measurement. The marginal structure model enables a pseudo-randomization study design in treatment-naive patient. The generalization of our study result are specifically to patients with IgT and cardiovascular risk factors. 
to conclude, in high-risk patients with IgT, the use of diuretic and statin are associated with the increased risk of diabetes, whereas the effect of beta blocker is non-significant. From a clinical perspective, among patients with IgT and cardiovascular risk factor at baseline, surveillance of glucose level should be considered. Further studies are warranted to examine the cardiovascular outcomes of using those medications among IgT patients. We gratefully appreciate the support from Navigator Chao, I'm Shen Lan from Duke Clinical Research Institute and Shanghai Renji Hospital.